OK, so we're going to explore positive integers which have the same number of digits in base 10 as they have distinct prime factors. So for example, 165 has got three digits written in base 10 and it's also got three distinct prime factors. So we'll just explore some examples and non-examples to begin with. So if we look at one digit examples, something like 2, 3, 5 or 7, any one digit prime number would work it's got exactly one digit and exactly one prime factor. But then something like 6 wouldn't work. So 6 is 2 times 3, that's got two prime factors but only one digit. But then another example would be that 9, which is 3 squared, has only got one prime factor repeated. So this would actually count as one of our integers we're interested in, that it's got one digit and one distinct prime factor. If we want to look at two digit examples, something like 11 or 13, this has only got one prime factor each. So these wouldn't work, we need to have exactly two prime factors. So for example, 12, which is two squared times three, this has got two distinct prime factors, two and three. So this would work. 14 would work, two times seven, so it's got two digits and two distinct prime factors. Then there are some more examples like 25, which wouldn't work because this is five squared. So this has only actually got one prime factor repeated. So it would need to have two because it's got two digits. And then we can make some larger examples like we've seen 165. We could also do, for example, 495 is three squared times five times 11. So this would work because it's got three digits and again, three distinct prime factors. So we don't count the fact that we've got a repeated three there. And we can make some even bigger examples, like for example, 646,646. When we work out the prime factorization of this, we get two times seven times 11 times 13 times 17 times 19. So we've got six digits and we've got exactly six distinct prime factors. So this would also be an example of one of our integers that satisfies this property. So the question now that we'll try to answer is we've gone up to six digits and the question is can we keep going with this forever? Are there infinitely many of these such integers that have got the same number of digits in decimal as they have prime factors? And if we explore this problem we'll find that actually the limiting factor on whether or not we can construct these numbers is the fact that we need to have distinct prime factors. So let's imagine we try to come up with an example of a hundred digit number that's got exactly a hundred distinct prime factors. So even if we try to make this number as small as possible by using the smallest possible prime factors, we'll find that we need to multiply together some pretty big prime numbers. So if we were to take the product just of the first hundred prime numbers, so every prime number up to the hundredth prime number is 541, if you multiply together all hundred of these numbers, you're going to get something which has actually got a lot more than a hundred digits. So we can see this isn't actually going to work necessarily. But we'll try and hone this to work out exactly how far we can go with these numbers that have got the same number of digits as distinct prime factors. So if we take the products, let's say just of the first 10 prime numbers, going all the way up to the 10th prime number is 29. When we work this out, we actually get a number which has got 10 digits. We get 6 billion, 469 million, 693,230. So we've got exactly 10 prime factors and we've got exactly 10 digits. So this means that we can definitely do this going up to 10 digits. So let's try making an example with 11 digits. So if we just use the product of the first 11 prime fact numbers, we do 2 times 3 times 5 all the way up to times 29 then times 31. This is the product of the first 11 prime numbers. And this is the smallest number we could possibly make that's got 11 distinct prime factors. But when we calculate this, we're going to get 200 billion, 560 million, 490,130. So we've got 11 prime factors, but we've actually got 12 digits in this number. So we've run into a problem at this point that, yes, we can create an example that's got 10 digits and 10 prime factors, but if we want to use 11 prime factors, the number's now going to be too big. It's not possible to create something that's only got 11 digits. And then if we try and do the same thing going up to 12 prime factors, we see the problem actually just gets worse and worse. So we'd have to multiply the first 11 up to 31, then the next prime number 37. 
So we want this to have 12 digits, but we've already seen that the product without multiplying by 37 has got 12 digits. So now when we multiply by 37, this is going to have at least 13 digits and isn't going to work for us. And the problem just gets worse and worse if we try then 13 prime factors. So we'd have to times 41 as well. So we'd have 13 prime factors. But then we've multiplied something that's got at least 13 digits by 41. So this is now going to have at least 14 digits and again isn't going to work. And the problem just gets worse and worse as we add more and more prime factors. We have to multiply by more and more prime numbers which are bigger than 10. So we can conclude then that there are definitely not infinitely many of these numbers. There's actually, if you want to check for all of them, you'd only need to go up to 10 digit numbers to find them all. So there's only finitely many numbers which have got the same number of digits in base 10 as distinct prime factors.